Rosh Chodesh Teves always falls out during Hanukkah. Says the Rebbe, based on what's known that Rosh Chodesh includes all the days of the month, and that's why it's actually called Rosh, like the head in the literal sense that includes all the parts of the body. It's understood that all the days of Chodesh Teves, which are included as said in Rosh Chodesh Teves, are connected in some way to the days of Hanukkah. Also, says the Rebbe, there are two special days in the month of Teves, the fast of Asorah B'Teves and the Yom Hilula of the Alter Rebbe on Chavdala Teves. Since these are days that are set within the month, it makes sense to say that there's a connection between these days and the general idea of the month as discussed a number of times. Says the Rebbe regarding Chodesh Teves, the Chazal say, we have a posseg in the Megillah, Vatilokach Esther, Elamelech Achashverosh. Esther is taken to the king Achashverosh, and the posseg describes when it was, Bachoydesh or Asiri, who Chodesh Teves. Says the Gemara, what's the relevance of that? In fact, that it was Chodesh Teves. This is Yerach, this is a month, Shahaguf, Nehne Min Haguf. That one body derives pleasure from another body. What does this mean? Because this is a time that it's very, very cold. As Rashi says, Mepnei Atzina, because of the cold. So there's the Hanna, there's deriving pleasure. One body has pleasure from another, another body simply because of the body warmth that it generates. But the Rebbe says we know that every Indian Begashmias is coming from a Ruchni is the source. So in our case, the fact that Chaydish Teves is called Begashmias is coming because there's a certain godly revelation that's not shining as intense in the world. The Pasuk says, Ki shemesh that Havaya is in some to- sometimes also referred to as the Shemesh, as the sun. And this is not shining so strongly in the world. Godliness is then covered up, more concealed within the concealments of the garments of nature. As it's known, says the Rebbe, that the strong burning, shining of the sun during the summer months is also a sign on the great intense light and heat of Kedusha, of this level called Shemesh Havaya, that in the summertime is being drawn into the world. And that's why in those months, in the summer months, it's easier to achieve Avodas Hashem than in the winter months. And it is specifically, says the Rebbe, because of this reason that there's a certain advantage in the month of Teves compared to the other months. And that's what Chazal are hinting to us when they say, it's Yerach, it's the month. Shaguf Nenem and Aguf, that the body derives pleasure from the Guf, which is also referring to, as we know, that Ish and Isha, man and woman, husband and wife, is also a marshal for Hashem and Knesset Yisrael. So what this Maimur Azal is teaching us is that the Avoida of a Yid during this month, a time when it's cold in the world, a time when godliness is not shining so intensely in the world, this causes a special hanor, a special pleasure to Hashem. Now again, this is hinted in the words, Shaguf Nenem and Aguf, that the Guf, Kvayochel Hashem, is having pleasure from our Guf, from the Yid. But the Rebbe says everything in Torah, as we know, is precise and accurate. So it's understood that the fact that the expression over here being used is that the guf is nen, as deriving pleasure from the guf, fits with this pirush that we just said, that it's Hashem's pleasure from the avoid of the Yid, because the fact that there's a special pleasure by Hashem in the month of Teves, from the Yid's Avoida, it's specifically connected to the Avoida associated with the Guf, with the body of the Yid. And so too, up above, it's touching, so to speak, within Elikus, within godliness, Kavayachal, the level also that's called Guf, as we will explain. Says the Rebbe, to understand this, we know that every single thing that happens in the big world is also connected with the Avoida Sa'adam, with a person's personal Avoida, which you, uh, a, a person is called an Olam Katan, a small world. So everything that happens inside the Yid is then going to be reflected and going to achieve something in the bigger world. Says the Rebbe, in the summer months, when the Shemesh Havayu and this godly revelation is shining in the world, so this is a time that's mainly the Avoida associated with the Neshama, with the spirituality of the Yid. In other words, this is a time that the goof that the body is not getting so much in the way, covering over the neshama, and therefore it's possible for a yid, and if it's possible, therefore a yid needs to be involved in the matters of the neshama in a way that the oil, the light, the energy of the neshama is being felt. Now, even though, of course, we need to make sure that the body is also not getting in the way, we need to make sure that the body is not going to be coarse and thick because since the Nisham is inside the body, 
So in order for the neshama to shine, it's going to need to also deal with the guf, and the guf also needs to be a vessel that's fitting for the oira neshama, but that is only considered a preparation to the main avoid of the yid, again, in the summer months. In other words, that we're removing the blockages that might get in the way of the oira neshama, so that the person's neshama could shine, and at this point, he's mainly serving Hashem with his neshama. However, going back to the winter months, when the oil of Hashem, that Shemesh of Havaya, the sun, so to speak, is not shining so strongly, it's a time of coldness, then the main avoid of the Yid is more about the avoid of the Guf. In other words, it's about working on the, on the, the avoid of elevating and refining the Guf itself. Not so much about the sun shining, not so much about the Neshama and godliness shining, but it's more about elevating the Guf itself. Within this winter months itself, there's a difference as there ever between the month of Teves and the other months. In the other months, there's still some sort of warmth in the world, which means that the elevation, the purification, the refinement of the coldness of the body is also coming somewhat because of the heat, the warmth, the light of the Neshama. Whereas in the month of Teves, which this is the time of the ultimate cold in the world, as the Rebbe quotes Arashi and the Hara, so the Rebbe says, this shows a time that's absolute concealment of the body, which doesn't allow, not leaving room for any sort of revelation of the warmth of the neshama and the light of the neshama. And therefore the avoida then consists of elevating, refining the body, not by revealing the oil of the neshama, but rather coming from the body itself. The Rebbe says, the free the Rebbe told over in the name of the Tzemach Tzedek a story of the Baal Shem Tev. The Baal Shem Tov loved light. One time, it was a winter night, and there wasn't enough light by the Talmud Yeh Baal Shem Tov in order to illuminate the shul. So the Baal Shem Tov told them they should take off the roof, they should take, take ice, the icicles that were hanging from the roof. In Yiddish, it's eyes lichtalach, which would liter- literally be translated as the ice candles, these are the icicles, and to light them. The Talmudim did what the Baal Shem Tov said, and the icicles burnt. The Tzemach Tzedek said regarding this story that by the Chassidim and the Talmidim of Meirenu Habal Shem Tiv, even the eyes lichtelach, even these ice candles, these icicles, burnt and illuminated. In other words, what's the point of the story? The Baal Shem Tev showed how these icicles by themselves that are completely the opposite of light and warmth, they are now being transformed into light, into heat. In other words, that they are burning not in a way that they are losing their identity as ice, but rather the ice itself, as it remains an icicle, is now illuminating. Says the Rebbe, the same thing in our case. What we need to do with the coldness, with the darkness of the body, is not only by lighting, shining the neshama into it, because as a result of the oira neshama, but rather transforming it to the kedusha, also because of, from the perspective of, from the viewpoint of the guf itself. Says the Rebbe, how does this work? How is it even possible to take a body that seemingly is completely coarse and lowly, and now it should become a holy body even in a revealed way? And he was saying it's not even coming from the oil of the neshama, but coming from the physicality within the person. Says the Rebbe, the explanation is that on the contrary, it's specifically the guf that has more of a connection to atzmus, to the essence of Hashem. The neshama in its very essence is more connected, is more associated with the idea of oir, of giluyim, of light, of revelation. And therefore its connection to Elikus is also in a way of giluyir. It's specifically when godliness is shining. It's about godliness shining. Whereas the physical body of a yid, it's because Hashem chose the body. This is the essence of Hashem choosing the body of a yid. And this is why it's specifically the gashmi is of the yid, of the guf is connected to Hashem in a much deeper way than the light of the Neshama. Because so to speak, in the, bad, in the Gashmi is the Keguf, the Koyach of Atzmus, that energy of the essence of Hashem, which is even higher than the Neshama, is invested specifically and connected specifically, that choice was specifically to the Guf. Says the Rebbe, the, when does, is this Koyach Atzmus revealed? Within the Guf? It's actually specifically and precisely when the Oira Neshama is not shining. In other words, that's specifically that what brings forth the Koyach of Atzmus, which is not limited in any way, Chas V'Shalem, 
not even by the idea that it needs to be light, it needs to be shining. It's specifically in this time of darkness that suddenly the power of the body comes out, the, body, the power of Atzmus within the body. Says the Rebbe, this is then the inner pirush of Haguf Nenem in Haguf. The Guf, referring Kvayochel to Hashem, but which aspect in Elikus? The word Guf could also be understood as the essence of something, the very core of something. The Rebbe gives examples. There's an expression, Gufei Halochis, which refers to the very, very essence of the Halocha, or Gufa the Malka, and other expressions that we find where Guf means the very essence of something. So the Hano of the essence of Hashem Kavayochel is mainly not by removing the concealment of the body in a way that we're allowing the Oira and Neshama to shine, but the Hano of the Guf of Hashem is Min HaGuf, is from our physical body itself. That means that the Guf itself, by itself, from itself, is being transformed into Kedusha. And when is this achieved? As said before, it's specifically when it's cold, in a time when there's concealment. Says the Rebbe, now we can understand the connection to Chodesh, of Chodesh Teves to the days of Hanukkah. What's the idea of Hanukkah? The Pasuk says, Hashem illuminates my darkness. That's what Hanukkah is all about. It's about illuminating the darkness. And the darkness itself that's in the Rosh Hashanah, in the public domain, outside, becomes Yagiyachoshki, becomes completely light, completely shining, and the Choshech itself is shining now. And the Koyach for this is, as the Pasuk says, Vahavaya. Chassidus explains that the Vav in the beginning of the word Vahavaya represents on a level of godliness that's completely higher than Ishtalshalus, or in the language of Chassidus known as Havaya de Le'ela, the higher level within Shem Havaya. Says the Rebbe, this is the same point we just said about Haguf, Nehenem in Haguf. That when we come from Guf, from the very essence of Hashem, so now we have the power to even transform the darkness of the Guf itself into Kedusha. Says the Rebbe, this is generally also the difference between the Avoid and the time of the Beis HaMikdash and the time of Golos. In the time of the Beis HaMikdash, when there is godly revelation in the world, there were the ten miracles that happened on a regular basis to our ancestors in the Beis HaMikdash and so on. And then there's in the time of Golos, whereas the Pasuk describes, oh, say, no, 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 no. we're not seeing signs, we're not seeing the miracles. Godliness is more concealed. It's a state where the darkness is covering the earth. And it's specifically then that we have this avoida of vahavaya yagiachoshki, the ability coming again from the essence of Hashem to transform even the darkness itself. The Rebbe says this is actually the inner reason of why we say that the Neir is Hanukkah are never nullified. And that even after the Churban, even in our Golos, we still have this idea, not like the Neir is Hamikdosh, that we don't have when the base Hamikdosh doesn't exist. Because at this point, the Neir is Hamikdosh are also bottled. But Neir is Hanukkah are forever, although, you would say, one second, Neiris Hanukkah are a zeicha to what happened in the Neiris HaMikdash. How is it possible the Neiris HaMikdash don't last forever and the Neiris Hanukkah do? But here is the point. Because the Neiris of the Beis HaMikdash was drawing down a light which is more connected to say the Rishtal Shlus. And a oil which is called a oil bekeli, something that could be contained in a vessel. And therefore, in a time when it's Golos, a time of concealment, the Neiris of the Beis HaMikdash are nullified. In other words, we don't have those kalim, those vessels, to be able to contain that oil. Whereas Neiris Hanukkah, which is about bringing down an essential oil that's much higher than Ishtal Shalos, this kind of oil doesn't have any changes. It's not possible to be changed in any way. They shine even in a time of the utmost darkness, and they transform the darkness itself into light. The Rebbe makes the connection out to Asara Beteves. Now we understand the connection to this fast in Teves. Because what is the idea of the, this fast? This is the beginning, the, the root for the whole lineage of Golos. It's like the idea of the coldness in the month of Teves with all this concealment and darkness. Simply, the Rebbe says, the siege on Yerushalayim which happened in Asara Beteves, this is what led to all the further and later parts of the Churban. But what's the idea of the fast? We're doing tshuva for the Churban and Golos. So that the fast itself is ultimately transformed into days of Sosin and Simcha and Yomim Toivim. And now the Rebbe makes the connection to Chavdal Tevis as well. The Rebbe says this idea of coldness is also in the faculties of the person. And which part of the person is considered the cold one? That's the Seichel Anusha, human logic. Famous Pisgum, the Rebbe quotes, as says, There's nothing as cold as the natural Seichel, as the human Seichel. And what's the Chiddush of Torah Sachsidus? of Chassidus Chabad, of the Alter Rebbe, the one who founded Chassidus Chabad, 
is that he brought down the matters of Amuna and Seichel, godly Seichel, into a way that it could be understood so that human logic itself could also start comprehending Elikus. And when the natural Seichel understands Hasoga Elikis, says the Rebbe, the Rebbe is quoting over here, that this is considered the real true Tchias HaMesmi, that's something that was like dead and cold, and now that was turned into life. Says the Rebbe, this is the connection that between the Yom Hilula of the Alter Rebbe, when we say that Kol Mais of all of his actions, this Torah and Avoid that he did during his whole life, and the day of his Hilula, that's all now standing, Betachas HaShlemus, how this is all connected to Chodesh Teves, because through the actions, the Torah and Avoid of the Alter Rebbe, it was accomplished. That Mepnei Hatsino, in other words, Dafka in the place, Dafka where it's cold. In that cold mind of logic, which is usually doesn't get emotional, and yet this itself should bring out the gufnen, in other words, the ultimate hanoa and chamimus of Kedusha.